Hello, my wonderful people of the world. It is a far too hot day. And what? How hot is it right now, actually? I kind of want to know. Let's see. The cool thing is, well, it's kind of cool and also kind of freaky. I can just put in how hot is it into Google, and it knows exactly where I am. I don't even have to put in, you know, how hot is it my zip code, how hot is it where I live. It just knows. Moderately freaky, but also it indulges my laziness. So I can't really complain about it. It's 100 degrees exactly. Cool. Oh, but it's supposed to cool off from here. We're getting down to 91 degrees by next Monday. That's kind of weird. Thursday is supposed to be cloudy, but it's 95. God, I hate summer. All right, anyway. <laughs> I'm dying over here. I am probably suffering from heat exhaustion. I am probably hallucinating for all I know. Like maybe I'm seeing this oasis in the middle of my room and I don't even really know about it because I'm too far out to actually even notice that I'm hallucinating. That's how insane I currently am. So let's get on with it. This is all going to be about Blaze Blue Central Fiction. Uh, mostly so, largely it's going to be about a question that I have to pose to you, which I guess I can just say it easily enough, and then I'll, you know, that'll, that'll be the timestamps. It's basically just like, this is where I actually have the discussion about the question, everything else happens before that. But the question I can basically boil down to, are you still excited for Central Fiction? And then I'm going to get into why I'm asking that question, and my own reasoning behind why I'm asking that question, etc., and all that good shit. But first, let's talk about the controversy. Guilty Gear had a little bit of blah of a reaction to it because the story mode did not have an English dubbing. They decided to release it subtitle only, which I know plenty of anime fans are plenty fine with. Uh, a lot of people prefer subtitle only. I, I'm divided on the issue. Like, really, my only... I would prefer my anime to be dubbed because dividing my attention between reading subtitles and actually focusing on what's occurring on screen uh, isn't, I'm not a big fan of that, but I'm also not a fan of uh, low cost dubbing and low quality voice acting and that's kind of what occurs a lot of the time. Most of the time when a dub happens, it's just the voice actors aren't very good. And now personally, when you're looking at it from my angle, of course, I couldn't care less about the fact that there's no it could be it could not have subtitles and the only language is like pig latin and i wouldn't even give a shit because i'm not going to pay attention to it one way or the other i've never cared for the story mode you know that if you have paid ever, if you have ever paid any attention to me if you have ever listened to me talk about story mode in uh fighting games in general you know i could not care less and that isn't to say necessarily that i couldn't care less about story in fighting games but more so that I've never seen a good story in a fighting game, and I think part of that is on me a little bit, because I, I don't know, you know, I'm not going through every single one and picking through it uh, with a fine-tooth comb or anything, looking for good, make, looking for good things, looking for bad things, and kind of separating them and being like, all right, was this overall a good experience or not? It's just like I experienced the entirety of CT story mode, and it was just batshit crazy and I wasn't interested at all. I did Mortal Kombat X's story mode. I've seen the efforts toward putting a story into Street Fighter and I've seen a little bit of the story mode in Street Fighter 5 and I just thought the writing was subpar and not worth bothering with and so that's my big thing is ultimately that and I don't want to disparage anybody that does enjoy like if you enjoy the story mode I'm not saying this is a shit story mode and thus nobody should enjoy it uh, stories are written for different people. Some people enjoy... I mean, you know what? I don't even need to go into reasoning. Look how many copies of Twilight sold. Look how many copies of Fifty Shades of Grey sold. There are different things out there for different people. That's really all there is to it. So if anybody ever knocks something that you enjoy, either A... Well, I mean, number one, it's always an opinion. There is no objective, there's no such thing as an objective opinion, and that's all it is when it comes to enjoying a, something that's like a pastime or a hobby of yours. 
it is subjective and thus you should never let anybody feel less about you should never allow anybody to make you feel less about something you enjoy because they themselves don't enjoy it that is their opinion you have your own enjoy your shit enjoy whatever you enjoy and continue on with your life don't let anybody ever take that away from you pure and simple especially not me not my dumb ass don't do that i'd feel bad but like i said there are different things for different people out there and for me blaze blue guilty gear o'neill i mean o'neill didn't have a legitimate story mode but it does have you know like the arcade stuff where they have the conversations and they show a little bit of story but a lot of the story stuff just really isn't for me in general i'm very, now i'm also very judgmental about stories i would say i'm far more judgmental uh than the average person because i've enjoyed writing myself in the past and i've actually like if i thought that being an author was like something that was viable and not incredibly chancy and risky I would absolutely sit down and write a book. Like, I've had ideas float... I've had numerous ideas float around in my head that I'm just like, man, I could turn this into, like, a movie script, or I could try to make this, like, an anime or something like that, or I could just write a book, do something with it. And I'm just sitting here like, but that's so scary. That's so frightening. You know, it's you're aiming... You're really putting your hopes into something that is very much luck-based to a certain degree. And I mean, I don't want to get too much into that. We're supposed to be talking about Blaze Blue. Why am I here? We'll talk about Blaze Blue. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, so the story mode not having a dub, that's been a bit of a sticking point for a lot of people. A lot of people have said like, oh, well then fuck that. Like why I, I experience this. I want to be able to experience this in my native language. And I understand that entirely. Like I said, I don't particularly like that you have to divide your attention between reading subtitles and then also paying attention to what's happening on screen. That's a little bit mitigated by the way that Blaze Blue's story mode is delivered in that it's mostly a visual novel style, so there's not... I mean, you know, there aren't a ton of cutscenes occurring on scene, but there are still cutscenes scattered throughout all the visual novel style stuff which now you're going to have to read and potentially kind of miss things in the cutscene itself because you're sitting there reading instead and it's really difficult because on one hand it feels lazy and it i don't want to say it feels lazy but i'd have to i don't know how public they make their sales figures but I can't imagine Blaze Blue has noticed a significant increase in sales. I would say they're probably pretty static. Because uh, there's... How often do you see, like, a new name pop up in any... Like, in competitive, on, you know, like, doing videos of it on YouTube or Twitch or anything like that? There's really nobody new popping up. It's pretty much the same people consistently um, throughout the lifespan. Like, I've seen a lot of people drop away, but I haven't really seen anybody new come in. And... So, like I said, I feel like part of it is just, you know, we don't... We're spending a lot of money to pay these voice actors to come in. And honestly, we're just not getting the return we want for it. So, maybe we sacrifice this in order to save a little bit of money and potentially get a little bit more profit out of this game than we would have otherwise. And I certainly understand that from a business standpoint, obviously. And part of me is like, sweet. That I mean, that means we get the game sooner, right? Probably, because now they don't have to worry about compiling all those audio files and making sure they all play at the proper points. They don't have to worry about all that shit. They just have to worry about the subtitles. So, I mean, you know, that's still a big undertaking, right? Like, somebody still has to translate it into various languages, and somebody still has to compile all of the text boxes and all that shit in order to... Well, not really, because that's already all done for the Japanese. It just... They have to replace whatever, hiragana, katakana, whatever the fuck it's called. I should know this. I'm a terrible person. We've established this. Sorry. Um, but yeah, they just have to replace those text boxes with the whatever language they're uh, subbing it in. So, I mean, there's probably what, like, a variety of uh, European languages, like French, Italian, German, I think are like three of the most common ones. Uh, Spanish, obviously, would be a big one. It's kind of weird how Spain is in Europe, but I don't consider Spain. I don't consider Spanish. It, probably part of that is just because I live in California, so like I'm right above Mexico. I see so many Mexicans throughout the state that like it just it doesn't occur to me to think of Spanish as a European language, even though again Spain is in Europe. 
<laughs> that just occurred to me. It's just like on a kind of little weird little tidbit. But anyway, um, so you have those languages that you have to translate it all into. So there's a bunch of stuff you have to do, a bunch more work, but without the actual dubbing of it, maybe we get the game a month earlier than we would have otherwise. And maybe I'm okay with that. <laughs> Not maybe, I'm definitely okay with that. Like I said, I, I don't care about the lack of a dub. And to be perfectly honest, uh, I kind of... So, the, my main characters. Tager has always had a good voice in both languages. I have never not liked either of his voices in both Japanese and English. Azrael. I hated his English voice. Um, now, the person who did his English voice also voiced Wesker in Marvel vs. Capcom 3... I thought he did a wonderful job with Wesker. I'm not trying to say he's a bad voice actor. But I felt like he was a really good low-key sinister. Not like Loki, like the Norse god or the Marvel figure. But like L-O-W-K-E-Y. Low-key. So, yeah. Eh. Sorry. I don't know why I felt like I had to stab. I don't know. Uh, like a more sinister style of voice. Whereas Asriel is like big and boisterous and in your face and just, you know, raw. And instead he was just kind of like, Rawr! And I didn't like that. Whereas his Japanese voice actor is just, he was that big and that boisterous and just screaming and just wants to hurt shit. And I really enjoyed that quite a bit more. Taukaka. Her English voice makes me want to quit playing the game. Platinum. Holy good God. Like, there are plenty of characters in the game that their English voices just kill me. Now, I don't know if... Are they going... Is that only extending to story mode? Or does that extend to everything? Is, are English voices just gone, period? That's actually something that I don't know. So somebody more knowledgeable than myself, please fill the people in and let them know. Uh... But anyway, enough about that. Two new characters since I last talked about this. I actually cannot remember if I ever talked about S. But I don't really care about her. Like, I like her weapon. But her is a character. Her design just screams generic anime made to me. Like, there's nothing particularly special. It's like if, if Blaze Blue had kept all of the people that went to like whatever the fuck the military university was or whatever if they kept them all in those school uniforms so you would have had makoto uh carl Jin, fucking noel i guess noel still does kind of wear it who was the other one not izzy Oi. subaki there was another one that went there right i don't fucking know Maybe I should have paid attention to the story. I would have been able to fucking tell you. But if they had kept all of them in their school uniforms, then they would have just been, you know, like, these generic schoolgoer people. School boys and girls. I know words. I'm fantastic at language. I just talked about how I wanted to be a writer. And I'm using just wonderful sentence structure right now. Be envious, motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> so... If, if, like I said, it would be like if they had kept all of them in their school uniforms, where it's like, all right... This person might be a maid by day, but she's a superhero badass by night, and this is her real costume that she's gonna wear when she's fighting. But no, she still just she still looks like a generic anime maid. This just so happens to have a big ass sword. Now, granted, there is some appeal to her gameplay because, as many as I noticed, and as many other people have noticed, there are some similarities between how she seems to play and with Nanase from Unil. And if you have paid attention to Arc System Works games. You notice that they like themselves some resource reutilization. They are more than happy to uh, recycle animations and stuff and reuse them. Like, just play some kanji, kanji, and Persona 4 Arena. Then play a little bit of Azrael. They have like five animations that are pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is that Azrael doesn't have a chair. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um. And so there are other similarities elsewhere, but I can't remember them off the top of my head. I'd have to actually, like, see them again to be like, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that one now. Um, but so, again, she's has some striking similarities in her movements and her moves to Nanase from Unil. And if you remember my time with Unil, Nanase was the character I settled on toward the end of its online lifespan until it died and until there's still no fucking word about Unist on consoles motherfuckers help me I need that game in my life I need an active community surrounding it 
so I can actually enjoy it and play it because god damn it I love me some O'Neal. Let me love some Unist, you sons of bitches. <sighs> Ruining my life. But anyway, so I mean that's really all that I have to say about S is I, I think her character design is very uninspired, but I there's a limited amount that you can see just from a short little, you know, one minute teaser of an announcement trailer. And we have even less to go than that off of the character that was announced today via Famitsu. The character called shit, what was her name? I know her first name is Mai, but unfortunately Mai is not a very is not a particularly uh you know, anybody that's gonna think about Mai, if you're like, oh yeah, I play Mai in a fighting game, King of Fighters. Nobody's gonna think anything else. Mai Natsumi. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. I don't really care. <laughs> um But she Oh boy, I'm excited. She's a spear user. And she has a big red spear, very reminiscent of Gaia Bulge. Gaia Bulg. Again, pronunciation. Who gives a shit? Uh, from the Fate series, Fate Stay Night. What was the other one? Is it just called Fate Extra? God damn it, it's been too long since I've seen that shit. Anyway, Kuchu Lane is going to be a playable character in a game coming out called like Fate Stella or some shit like that. Published by X Seed Games. I actually pre ordered it. I'm excited. I like that series. I don't actually know anything about it, but shit, it has Kuchu Lane in it. I'm gonna play that dude. You better know it. You know it. Uh, so, anyways, if you remember from my Persona 4 Arena times, specifically Ultimax, I was excited for Ken because he was a spear user. I really liked the weapon type. It's not my favorite weapon type, that would fall to the scythe, but very few people are willing to, uh, for some reason, there's just not many people that think of the scythe as a weapon. Like, Testament, I think, is the only... Does anybody... I don't think anybody uses a scythe in the entire Soul Calibur series, do they? Because that's the other notable one where characters fight with weapons. And I don't think there's... Like, Testament's basically it that I can think of in fighting games. And, unfortunately, there's no testament in Guilty Gear XR yet, because, god damn it, they hate me. Arc System Works just wants to make me miserable. That's all they exist to do. Ah. But Spears, Spears are up there. I really enjoy Spears. And so when I see that, I see a Spear Woman, I'm like, yeah, buddy. And then her character, not necessarily her character design, but just, you know, blue hair, obvious warrior, you know, strong, independent woman that don't need no man. She reminds me of the character Laura from the uh, Trails of Cold Steel game that is a Legend of Heroes series. She was my favorite character in that game, and so just being a little bit reminiscent of that already has an appeal to me. Now, granted, uh, she also has some pants that have some gaps in them that show off some hips. She has a shirt that's not really a shirt. But it shows off some side boob, and who doesn't love side boob? Like, come on, man, that's just a universal appeal right there. So, of course, she's got that going for her. But, ultimately, it really is the spear, and we'll see how she ends up playing. I mean, we just talked about uh, recycled resources. Maybe she's just going to be almost a carbon copy of Ken from Persona 4 Arena. We don't know, and Ken was an amazing character. Fantastic. One Evo. 2015, right? That's the that's the one that Persona 4 Arena Ultimax was at. He won Evo. He's that good of a goddamn character. Boring as fuck, though. Holy crap, was he just dull as hell to play. And so that makes it a little bit worrisome that it's like, all right, we know Arc System Works likes to copy some things, likes to not be completely original, not be entirely inspired by new ideas and might reuse some assets here or there. Is she gonna wind up the same? Is my gonna wind up being just as boring? And nobody knows yet because there isn't any trailer uh, for her yet. It, all that we have is like a single page screenshot. I don't know, I think it's actually a two page cover kind of a thing. Uh, but it just basically shows, I mean, it's just still pictures, like three still pictures and a big character model. That's really all you get. And so obviously I can't exactly make any guesses as to how she's going to play based off of that. But again, because she is a spear user and because... I'm going to get into this in a bit. But because the game has been out for so long in arcades, 
I've kind of lost interest in Hibiki. Uh, if you remember, probably don't because it's been so goddamn long since Hibiki's announcement, let alone the game's actual release when we got to see full uh, matches with him. I thought Hibiki was going to be an interesting character, a character that I might want to play. And I think that opinion has reversed since then. I won't know until I actually get my hands on the game and I actually get to play these characters once and for all for myself. But, um... I don't know. He's, he doesn't seem... He doesn't uh, have the appeal anymore that he did when it first the game first came out. Now, let's just transition directly into the question because that does have a bit to do with it. Are you still excited for this game? And the reason why I asked that is because I think Central Fiction, from what I've seen so far, is the second best Blaze Blue. The second best version of Blaze Blue. And the only one that surpasses it was Chrono Phantasma post Kokonoe nerf. Like, because Chrono Phantasma was actually a really, really good game. The original version of it. Um, but then Kokonoe came out. And she just destroyed the meta all on her own. She was so goddamn strong and so oppressive. And basically the cat, the tier list got boiled down to Kokonoe, characters that have a way to deal with Black Hole, characters that don't have a way to deal with Black Hole. And nobody gave a shit about anything else because that is just how strong Kokonoe was in contrast to the rest of the cast. So that kind of ruined it. But then post-patch Kokonoe was more balanced, still incredibly strong, still undeniably S-tier, but she was nowhere near as insane as she was when she first started. And so I that is my favorite version of Blaze Blue right there, unquestionable. I think Central Fiction has the chance to surpass that i again will not know that until i actually get my hands on it and have the opportunity to play it and we'll see how it goes from there but despite that despite saying that and knowing that i have no interest in actually watching anything about it in learning anything about it and this is by i've paid the least attention to central fiction out of any other blaze blue prior to this I watched, even though I knew I was going to hate the hell out of Extend, uh, Chrono Phantasma Extend to be specific, I still watched a fair amount of gameplay, probably more than I ever watched a Central Fiction, uh, just because, I mean, there were certain characters that I would always tune in to watch, Asriel, Tager, uh, Makoto, Bullet were examples of them, but, and then there were certain players as well that I would, if I saw them playing, I would absolutely watch their matches, and that no, that's no longer a thing for me, and I can't really pinpoint exactly where this change occurred, where I was finally just like, okay, well, I just don't even give a shit anymore, but the fact of the matter is, is like, we got Extend, and then like a week later, I think it was actually two weeks, they announced Central Fiction, they show off a trailer, they show off some new stuff here or there, and then they start announcing new characters, Naoto and Hibiki. And then they have Loke tests. And now we're seeing footage of Loke tests. We're hearing all the changes to characters, new combo routes, new neutral tools, thoughts about the new characters. And then we st uh, see Nine come out. We see Izzy, I mean not Izzy, or Izanami come out. And um, the game actually ruled, the game actually released before that. But the game actually releases in November of 2015. Then we see Nine. Then we see Izanami. And we have all of this time almost a year's time now more than a year if you count the Loke tests as well of footage surrounding this game of knowledge gained from Japanese players and without a single opportunity to get our hands on it ourselves well there is they actually they got a Nesica uh, cabinet down in some Southern California arcade I it's far it's like a seven hour drive I looked it up it's about a seven hour drive for me not including traffic uh, that is, <laughs> no thank you, um, but there was one cabinet, I think, in the entire, maybe more than one, but there was one place you could go to to potentially play Central Fiction, but it never really seemed that popular, which is understandable, because Blaze Blue in Southern California kind of just, it died a long time ago and never really recovered, from what I can tell, um, and so it's not surprising that that didn't seem to be a rousing success, but anyway, we, you know, moving on from that, that's just so much time where we have to sit back not capable of playing the game not able to get our hands on it and discover things for ourselves test things for ourselves and so it's gotten to the point now where I'm just kinda of sitting here like I eventually the game will come out cool but I don't really care about I'm not looking forward to it I am not sitting here 
checking the calendar, looking at how many more days have to go by until the release of the game. Like, I am not excited for it in any way, shape, or form because I feel like I've already experienced the game thanks to all of this time and all of the resources we have at our fingertips, all of the knowledge that is spread through websites like Dustloop. And obviously I popped off plenty regarding my uh, utter disdain for the business model that Arc System Works has continued to revolve around, has continued to use, and shows no signs of changing whatsoever. I hate it. I despise it. That's the best way I can put it, is that I despise that shit. Um, but I don't think that can necessarily, that alone can attribute um, to just my kind of disregard for the game in general, to my not caring to pay attention to it anymore. And I just wanted to know if you guys felt the same, if there was any kind of thing, if you guys were still, you know, like, hype about it, if you're still sitting there playing Chrono Phantasma Extend, just waiting until Central Fiction releases, or if you've fallen into the anime game rut, where it's just kind of like, I'll play Revelator until Central Fiction drops, and Central Fiction drops, I'll play that until whatever next game uh, it's moderately popular in the anime string of fighting games drops and then I'll play that for a while then we'll switch over to the next iteration of Guilty Gear so on and so forth or if you are again just like no Blaze Blue's my shit I cannot wait for Central Fiction I am sitting here with bated breath fuck Persona well Persona 5 is not even going to come out not Persona yeah Persona 5 that's not even coming out until Valentine's Day of next year but like all the Final Fantasy 15 I don't even know any other... Like, I know releases that I'm looking forward to. Pokemon Sun and Moon! Most of my shit is, like... Because I actually have a few games pre-ordered right now. And it's, like, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse. Because it looks like they fixed all... I had a lot of problems with Shin Megami Tensei 4. But it looks like they fixed most of them through Apocalypse. And hopefully they did, and I will be able to enjoy it. Um, that previously mentioned, like, Fate Stay Night Extella or whatever it's called... Uh, what was the other well there's another JRPG Trails of Cold Steel 2 is in there but there was another JRPG shit now I have to go look it up because I feel like I have to finish this thought gosh darn it come on now internet connection don't you fail me now the problem is I have to click through like 17 goddamn links just to get through <laughs> to find my uh, orders oh King of Fighters 14 comes out next week I am actually I am uh <laughs> dubious regarding that i don't question the gameplay of king of fighters 14 i don't think you can do that with king of fighters in general those games are always really solid and really oh it's not fate stay night excella it's just fate excella uh that's unquestionable but king of fighters 12 and 13 had the trashiest the trailer park of trash tier netcode and online experience and if that continues that game will go nowhere to look like it does and then to have reported shit online nobody's that that game will die so so fast so fast and it'll make me sad because i really i i would love to see king of fighters make a resurgence for it to get the respect it deserves i think they fucked up with the graphical models that they picked and the way the modeling that they did because it's fairly subpar but Again, if the game plays well and it has solid online, I think it'll do well for itself. But if it does not have good online, it's fucked right out the gate. Um, that is all I'm looking forward to, huh? Pokemon Sun and Moon. I thought there was another big JRPG that was releasing this fall that wasn't just Final Fantasy XV. Because I wouldn't really consider, like, I mean, Trails of Cold Steel 2, I'm definitely looking forward to that quite a bit. Because Trails of Cold Steel was a breath of fresh air for JRPGs. Uh, that I have not experienced in a good long while and I really love that game and I cannot wait for the sequel but I cannot under any circumstances declare that to be a big release but like I said a hell of a lot of fun but yeah Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse Pokemon Persona 5 let's see is, this, is the Take Your Heart Premium Edition still available can you still pre-order it looks like you can I remember it sold out fairly quickly, but I wonder if they were just like, no, just take as many pre-orders as you want, man, and we'll, we'll meet it. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, I'm just, 
I don't know. When Blaze Blue comes out, it comes out. And I don't know if I'm going to buy it yet, because again, it has the same business model. $50 for the PS3 version, $60 for the PS4 version. Do I want... Well, it's different here. Like, it's different when it's an extend version than it is when it's kind of a new iteration. If they made it so that, like, the first game was like $50 or $60. Cool. Then you have the update, the patch... And then you have the extend version. If the extend version was not full price, like it ended up being, if it was just like a $30 update, or maybe even like a $40 update to purchase standalone, and then if you already have a copy of the original version of that game, then it's like a $25 update or something like that. It would be far easier to swallow a fully priced version of the game like Central Fiction or like Revelator, but... Again, going from Xard Sign to Xard Revelator and having that be a full priced update? Nuh uh. That is a far more difficult pill to swallow, and it's kind of the same thing here where it's like. Central Fiction has a lot of changes to it, but. Five new characters, right? That's pretty big. Because they only had. Revelator had what? Hi Hoon? Raven, Jacko, Jam, now Dizzy. So they also had five, but Dizzy was a late release. Hmm. I'm having some inner turmoil with myself. I guess it depends on how much you care about the characters, right? Because, like, I mean, that's my massive problem with Guilty Gear is that I haven't found a single character that I actually give a shit about and that I want to sit down and learn and play for the long term like I can find characters I'd enjoy playing Kai for a month I'd enjoy playing Jacko for a, like a week Sin for a month but none of them except for Chip seem like oh yeah I really want I would really enjoy continuing to play these characters for the long term and the problem with Chip is that he's too hard he's too difficult it's too stressful to play that fucking character and so like after if I just sat down and played that character for like two hours a day for the next four or five months everything would become you know second nature hit confirms would become a habit and after that time he would no longer be stressful to play again it would all just come down to muscle memory and just understanding intrinsically without having to think about it this is exactly what i need to do in these various situations and there's no again there's no thought about it but until then it's all just so difficult and it's so just like mind fucking and then when you fuck something up and you take all that damage man oh boy and I don't have two hours a day to spend for months on time on just learning one single character I can't do that there's a reason why I pick easy to use characters <laughs> um, but yes yeah, so I, I, I'm rambling on now at this point and that, that's really all that I kind of wanted to ask is just do you actually stay excited for a game that is not only announced but just so readily thrown into our faces that this is a fully completed and done game that we could easily have a playable version of in our hands at this moment and the only reason we don't is because of like story mode or something nothing to do with the actual gameplay itself just an additional mode and I guess that's kind of the Street Fighter 5 argument right where Street Fighter 5 released with a fairly bare bones edition of itself and it hasn't they haven't really followed through I shouldn't say they haven't followed through on their promises they have it's just that their follow through has not been of an expectable quality level and thus has opened themselves up to further and further criticism but when it released you knew what you were getting right they came out and said look this game could use more time in the hyperbolic time chamber it could use some more time and training but the Capcom Pro Tour needs it we're just gonna drop it and understand that you know we have more stuff coming for you this isn't the end of the game this isn't the complete game please just bear with us and people did not do that holy god they did not do that now granted there were very many uh, viable complaints regarding numerous things mostly the online the terrible servers uh, at the beginning of the game and you know the ongoing rage quitting issue all that shit but 
that's the argument is that do you sacrifice sales by releasing a game and then promising more to come later because people just see like oh this game doesn't really have much going for it right now it just you have a tutorial mode a versus mode and an online mode and that's all you got and there's no you know the story mode is promised to come in you know like three or four months when they get it all translated and finished and they'll come out free you don't have to spend anything for it it's not paid dlc or anything like that but you do have to wait for the patch and then so then now you come out with like okay we've released the game and now there are a bunch of people who have just decided to sit on it and wait until the game is quote unquote complete how many of them forget about it by the time the story mode actually comes out and then when the story mode does come out they're just like ah hey, you know whatever i don't really care anymore and that's a bit of a problem that's an argue that's you know it's a business argument you got to have and so obviously i know which side i'm on they have a playable version of the game fucking give it to me assholes <laughs> that's my outlook but that's not the same outlook as everybody else and i certainly don't even know whether or not i'm even close to a majority in that opinion um but yeah i just like i said i think this is Aside from Chrono Phantasma Extend and Continuum Shift, both Extend versions, I just couldn't care less about them because I knew from the get-go, from everything I saw regarding them, that I thought they were dull games that I wouldn't enjoy, and that wound up being true. They were not my favorite games in the world. Uh, so aside from them and knowing that I'm not going to enjoy them, I'm looking forward to this version of Blaze Blue the least, even though, again, I think it has the chance to be the best version of Blaze Blue yet. And I just wanted to know whether or not the whole, you know, circular anime uh, release schedule has kind of gotten to anybody else as well and how you guys are thinking about it. So, with that, I take my leave as always. Thank you for listening and I will talk to you next time.